Hello and welcome back to section seven of uh, ITIL4 foundation training. This is about the practices. We will look at the overview of practices and get into the general management practices. What is a practice? A practice is a set of organizational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. These resources are grouped into the four dimensions of service management, which means a practice is a collection of resources like tools and technology, teams and people, suppliers and partners, value streams and processes, which are the four resources or the dimensions of service management. The ITIL SVS, the service value system, includes 14 general management practices, 17 service management practices, and three technical management practices, which means there are three types or categories of practices, which make up a total of 34, all of which are subject to the four dimensions of service management, which means every practice is, it includes resources from the four dimensions. However, for the ITIL foundation level, only 15 practices are applicable for the exam syllabus. I look at all the practices. We've got the general management practices at the top left. And in the middle, we have the service management practices. And at the bottom, we have the technical management practices. General management, while there are so many of them, of concern to us for the foundation are only four. We've got the information security management here. Then we got supplier management towards the bottom here. We have relationship management somewhere here. And we have continual improvement at the top. So four of them. Continual improvement, information security management, relationship management, and supplier management. Of these, continual improvement will be covered in depth. So I'm putting one more star there for in-depth coverage. The middle one, which is the service uh, management practices, has many of them, but we are concerned only with the following. Change enablement at the top. In the, here we have incident management, IT asset management, monitoring and event management, problem management, release management, service configuration management, service desk, service level management, service request management. That makes 10 of the service management practices. And of them, six are in depth. Just like continual improvement on the left in the general management, we have got in service management of the 10, we got six in depth coverage. And those six are change enablement, incident management, problem management, service desk, service level management, and service request management. And the remaining four in the, which are IT asset management, monitoring and event management, service configuration management and release management are not covered in depth, but only superficially. Meaning their purposes are covered, but not other guidances. And at the bottom, we have the technical management and of the three, only one, which is deployment management will be covered. A clearer look at all the practices in this picture general management, service management, and technical management practices. We can see here the ones in bold. Those are the ones covered in the foundation exam for the syllabus. And we have continual improvement, information security, relationship, and supplier. However, you see continual improvement is also underlined. And underlined means at the bottom, the notation in syllabus in depth. And if not underlined, it is just in syllabus, but not in depth. So similarly, in the middle service management, we got in-depth change, enablement, incident management, problem management, service desk, service level management, service request management, in-depth, and the remaining not in-depth, IT asset, monitoring an event, release, and service configuration. And in the last column, technical, we have deployment management covered superficially and not in-depth. Generally, people who are aware of ITIL v3, they have this question, why are they are not processes anymore? Because in V3, we would have processes like release and deployment management, change management, etc. 
but we don't have those processes listed here. And that's because these are practices. A practice is a collection of resources and resources can include process. So if we go to the incident management practice, there will be an incident management process, no doubt. But that's not the only thing under incident management. We also have incident management related team structures, roles, competencies, incident management related uh, supplier and partner considerations, incident management related, related the information and technology considerations as well. So it's a more holistic view or a comprehensive view rather than just a process view. And that's why ITIL 4 makes it very flexible to design and maintain services and products. What are these three categories of practices? General management practices. These are practices taken from general business management domains. It's easy to note that things like knowledge management or supplier management are not necessarily from IT, but from other industries as well. Therefore, they are general management. On the other hand, service management come particularly from the service industries and from IT service industries. That's why we have items like change enablement, IT asset management, service request management, etc. Then we have the technical management like software development and management, deployment management, infrastructure and platform management. These are more technical and they have brought into service management. Therefore, general management and technical management have brought into service management for uh, benefiting service management. The continual improvement practice is the first one under general management practices. We have to know the purpose of every practice for all these 15 practices and for the ones covered in depth, not only the purpose, but also additional guidance. This practice will be covered in depth. The purpose of this practice is to align the organization's products and services with changing business needs. Note these two key phrases, alignment and the changing business needs. And this happens through the ongoing identification and improvement of services, components, practices, or any element involved in the efficient and effective management of products and services. Now to make an improvement, it is important to assess the current state. What is the current situation? And many methods can be used for that, such as SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Or you could use a balanced scorecard review or certain meetings like internal external assessments or audits, or even combination of these assessment techniques. While several techniques may be available for assessment of the current state, not all of them should be used all the time. Therefore, organizations should develop competencies only in those methods and techniques that will meet their needs. So there'll be techniques for assessment as well as techniques for improvement. While these are the techniques for assessment, there may be techniques for improvement such as Lean, Agile, DevOps, Six Sigma, etc. 